वेलकम आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर इन द कोर्स संधि इन पाणिनियन ग्रामर इन दिस लेक्चर वी कंटिन्यू स्टडिंग अच संधि और द वॉवल संधि वी स्टेटेड दैट अच संधि मीन्स संधि दैट टेक्स प्लेस ऑफ अ वॉवल एंड अच दिस संधि कुड बी अ कॉन्सनेंट एज वेल एज अनदर वॉवल डिपेंडिंग ऑन द एनवायरमेंट we said that there are two types of ach sandhi on the screen you see the second type dvisthanika ekadesha the first one is ekasthanika ekadesha one sthani and one substitute one substituent and one substitute one sthani and one adesha we studied that there are two instances of ekasthanika ekadesha they are yan sandhi and ayavayav sandhi yan sandhi is stated by the sutra iko yanachi and ayavayav sandhi is stated by echo yavayavah and then there are some more sutras also stating this particular sandhi we studied the meaning of these sutras we also studied the uddeshya vidheya bhava and the number of substituents then delineated because of this uddeshya vidheya bhava we also studied the criterion for selection of the substitute we also studied the template examples and then we studied the specific examples which fill into these templates thus we exhaustively studied the first type of atsandhi we applied the same procedure to the second type namely dvisthanika ekadesha where we have dvi sthani and ek adesha two substituents and one substitute stated by the adhikara sutra ekah purva parayoho 6184 where ek represents one substitute purva parayoho stands for in place of previous and latter sound purva par is the pratipadika and purva par yoho is the 6/2 of purva par purva is previous par is latter so in all this sutra means one substitute takes place of two sounds namely the previous one and the latter one this is also shown in this particular diagram where we have a plus b in close proximity in the samhita mode also stated like this a comes immediately before b and b comes immediately after a both in their turn bracketing each other and specifying each other as environment so in this environment of a plus b appearing in the samhita mode what we have is one of the rules stated in this section that begins with 6184 applies and generates the output in the form of c so a plus b are the two sthanis c is the one adesha two substituents one substitute a plus b is the 
input one of the rules in this particular section applies and generates the output in the form of just C. In case of ekasthanika ekadesha, we observe that we have A plus B as the input and the output is C plus B. This is the primary difference between ekasthanika ekadesha and dvisthanika ekadesha. There are five instances of dvisthanika ekadesha. The first one is guna sandhi stated by ad gunaha 6187. The second one is vriddhi sandhi stated by the sutra vriddhi rechi 6188. The third one is pararupa sandhi stated by the sutra engi pararupam and some other sutras. Engi pararupam is 6194. Four. Fourthly, Akas Savarane Dirghaha is the sutra stating the Savarana Dirgha Sandhi. Savarana Dirgha Sandhi is the fourth instance stated by the sutra Akas Savarane Dirghaha 61101. And finally, Purvarupa Sandhi stated by the sutra Ami Purvaha 61101 onwards. This is what we are studying, going to study in this particular lecture. It is important for us to remember these fundamentals about Ach Sandhi, the two basic types and the instances of each type. They are repeated only for the sake of convenience and the repetition should bring in more clarity, only that is the purpose. Let us now concentrate on Purvarupa Sandhi, the fifth one of the second type. This Purvarupa Sandhi is stated by the following four sutras that we shall be dealing with. The first one is Ami Purvaha 61107. The second one is Samprasaranacha 61108. The third one is Engaha Padantat Ati 61109. And finally, Nasinga Soscha 61110. These are the four sutras that we shall be studying in detail in today's lecture. First, let us study Ami Purvaha 61107. There are two words in the sutra, Ami and Purvaha. Ami is 7 slash 1 of Am. This is the 2 slash 1 suffix, Su Aujas Am, Out Shas, and so on. So, Am is the 2 slash 1, Dvitiya Ekavachana Pratyaya. suffix that is what is mentioned over here and ami is 7 slash 1 of am so ami means immediately before am purvaha is 1 slash 1 of purva that is previous sound this is the substitute purvaha rupa continues from engi pararupam and so gets connected with purvaha and then purvarupam is what is the interpretation that is generated the other words continued in this particular sutra are akaha 5 slash 1 of ak ak means a e u ru and lu so ak captures the first two pratyaharas stated in the pratyahara sutra and the sound stated therein these five vowels so akaha means immediately after these five vowels achi is 7 slash 1 of ach meaning a vowel that is immediately before a vowel and of course we have ekah purva parayoh so one substitute in place of two earlier 
and later substitute events. For Ru and Lu, which is also part of Ak, there are other specific rules stated in Panini's grammar which cancel 6, 1, 1, 0, 7. For example, Rutongi Sarvanamasthana Yoho. So, this sutra states the guna substitute in place of ru and also lu when am follows. So, this sutra will cancel 61107. All put together, let us look at the meaning of ami purvaha. Ami purvaha means immediately before am that is the 2 slash 1 suffix ritiya ikavachana pratyaya immediately before am and immediately after ak in place of both is placed one substitute that is the previous one that is in this case the ak. It is important to remember here that the environment for this Purvarupa Sandhi is just this am suffix. So, the environment is very very restricted. This sutra functions only in case of am suffix. In this case this is 2 slash 1. Now, let us look at the examples. So, for example, we have Rama plus Am, Rama plus Am. This is the Vitiya Ekavachana Pratyaya and the final form that we are deriving is Ramam, the Dvitiya Ekavachana form of the Pratipadika Rama. So, when you have Rama plus Am, there is this A and this A. A in Rama comes at the end of it, A in Am comes at the beginning of it. Since this is one pada, prakriti and pratyaya, so samhita is obligatory and so in place of both of them, this sutra 61107 applies and generates the output in the form ram, a and ma, that is ramam. In this case, obviously, a is followed by another a, so this is the scope of application of akasavarane dirghaha as well generating long a as the output. But because both these akaras are within a pada, we also have the pararupa sandhi that can apply over here, ato gune, apadanta dakara gune parataha pararupam ekadeshasya. So, pararupa sandhi is also possible, all these possibilities they are cancelled by Amipurvaha because of the specific mention of the suffix am. In case of am, no pararupam, no savarnadirghaha, just the purvarupam. So, we have ram, a and ma that is ramam. In case of hari plus am, obviously there is eco energy which has got its scope of application, but it is cancelled by this sutra Ami Purvaha which operates in a very restricted domain of the Pratyaya Am. So, we have Hari having E at the end, A at the beginning of Am and because this is one Pada, Samhita is obligatory and so in place of both these vowels, 61107 applies and generates the output in the form of Har E Ma Harim. Then we have Gauri plus Am. Now this is a long vowel, E followed by A. Once again, Iko Yanachi has got the scope of application. But because this sutra 61107 has got a very limited scope of application, so in this limited scope of application, 61107 cancels Iko Yanachi. And so um, in place of both these vowels is substituted the purva that is this long e. 
So we have Gaur, E and M, that is Gaurim. Similar is the case with Bhanu and Chamu. So we have Bhanu plus Am, the scope of application for Eko Yanachi, but is cancelled by this particular sutra because of the limited domain of application. And so in Bhanu plus Am, U, in Bhanu plus Am, U coming at the end of this Pada, A coming at the beginning of this Pada, because this is within a Pada, so Samhita is obligatory, 61107 applies and generates the output Bhan U Ma, that is Bhanum. Similarly, Chamu plus Am, where we have long U followed by A, and 61107 applies and generates the output cham, u and m that is chamu. This is how Amipurvaha operates in a very very restricted domain. Let us now proceed to the next sutra, Samprasaranacha 61108. Here there are two words two padas in the sutra, samprasaranat and cha. Samprasaranat is 5 slash 1 of samprasarana, which means immediately after samprasarana. Cha means and. Achi is continued. Achi is 7 slash 1 of ach, that is immediately before a vowel. Purvaha is continued from amipurvaha, previous sound as substitute and ekapurva parayoho is also continued meaning one substitute in place of two substituents earlier and later purva and para. So the meaning of this sutra is immediately after a samprasarana, immediately after a samprasarana and immediately before a vowel in place of both is substituted the previous sound that is the samprasarana. So what is a samprasarana is the next question. And samprasarana is a technical term defined by Panini by this particular sutra, Ignyana samprasaranam 1145. Ik as we know is a pratyahara and it captures the sounds e, u, ru and lu and ik is in 1 slash 1 so ik is the substitute. Yanaha is 6 slash 1 of yan. Yan is another pratyahara meaning ya, va, r and la. So yanaha means in place of yan. So the sutra means ik that is stated as a substitute of yan by the sutra is termed samprasarana. Repeat, sik, repeat, ik that is stated as a substitute of yan is termed samprasarana. Stated by the sutras 6115 as well as 16. So if yan is the input, if yan is the input, And in its place, 6115 or 16 has stated an ik. This ik is called samprasarana. This ik is called samprasarana. Let us take the example. There are two examples on this particular slide. Let us take the left hand side example where you have vach plus the. This is the past passive participle of the verbal root vacha to speak and we add the suffix ta to it by the sutra 32102 nishtha. Now in this case because this suffix is kit, so 6114 applies and substitutes this were consonant by yan in this case by ik, in this case o. 
So, we have U replacing the vowel consonant, A remaining as it is, and CH. So, we have U ACH plus the. Now, here is the case where you have U as samprasarana. Immediately after this U comes a vowel. So, samprasaranat and ACHI. And now, in place of both of them, substitute the purva, that is this samprasarana. So, the next step is by the application of 61108, we get uch plus t. Then we apply 8 to 30 and substitute this ch by k, and so we get uk plus t, uk t, something that is said. That is what is uk t. This is an example of samprasarana ch. Let us take one more example of samprasarana ch. This is the verbal form. So, we take the verbal root graha to take or to cognize and add the suffix lat to it to indicate the present tense by 3 to 1 to 3. This lat gets substituted by t by 3, 4, 78. Now, this verbal root graha and this suffix t have one more suffix in between namely na added by 3, 181. So, now you have graha plus na plus t. Now, because of this na, now something happens in this graha. So, this vowel, so this consonant r now is substituted by a samprasarana. So, now this r gets substituted by vowel ru. So, we have gru, this a remains as it is and we have a uh -huh. so gru, a uh -huh, na and ti and now we have samprasarana followed by a vowel. So, in case of in place of both of them 61108 applies and says do the purva rupa sandhi that means substitute this samprasarana. So, by doing that we have gru, uh, na, ti and then grinhati, which means he or she takes, he or she cognizes. So, these are the samprasaranas and this is the samprasarana substitute coming in place of two vowels and the purvarupa sandhi takes place. Now, let us study the third sutra engah padantat ati. In this sutra, there are three padas, engaha, padantat and ati. This is 61109. Engaha is phi slash 1 of eng. Eng means a and o. Engaha means immediately after eng, that is immediately after a or o. Padantat is phi slash 1 of padanta. Padanta means final part of a pad. So, padantat means immediately after something that comes at the end of a pad. This phi slash 1 and engaha which is also phi slash 1 are related. So, padantat becomes the qualifier of engaha. So, what both these mean is if an eng coming at the end of a pada. So, if eng occupies the final position of a pada, then immediately after that, that is the meaning of engaha and padantat. Then we have ati, 7 slash 1 of at, at meaning short a. So, ati means immediately before short a. So, immediately after ing that comes at the end of a pada and immediately before short a, what happens is purva rupa. So, previous sound is the one substitute. Of course, ekap purva parayoho continues. So, the meaning of the sutra is immediately after ing that is a and o that comes at the end of a pada and immediately before short a in place of both is substituted 
the previous sound that is aing that is a and o i repeat immediately after aing aing aha that is a and o so immediately after a or and o that comes at the end of a pada padantat and immediately before short a ati in place of both purva parayoho is substituted the previous sound that is purva rupa in this case it is ing which is a or o so here is an example hare plus ava these two are separate padas and so they are in the close proximity because the speaker intends to utter them in close proximity so we have hare having a at the end at the end of the pada and a short a coming at the beginning of the second pada and now in this case 61109 applies and generates the output in place of a and a a is the substitute so you have har a and v and then you join them together and you get hare v as the output similarly you have vishnu plus ava where you have o at the end followed by a at the beginning of the next word they are in the samhita mode and so 61109 applies and substitutes both o and a by the previous sound in this case it is o so we have vishn o and v and so vishno v that is the output generated both these outputs they are also written as this there is a sign of avagraha this is called avagraha that is inserted in between something that resembles the english s hareva and vishnova because there is this long vowel and there is this sandhi so this is indicated by this sign insertion this is how engap padantat ati works if you look at these examples once again you will observe that when you have hare plus ava a followed by a actually this is an instance of ho yavaya vaha similar is the case with o plus a but ho yavaya vaha applies generally at the end of the pada as well as at the in the middle of the pada anywhere but and also the right hand environment could be any vowel but in this case it has to be only a the right hand side environment and this a has to be at the end of a pada that's all once again very restricted very very limited environment in this this particular sutra applies now the final sutra in these four the sutra is nasingasoscha nasingasoho is 7/2 of nasi and nas nasingas nasingas are two suffixes 5/1 and 6/1 so how just amout shas tabhyam bhis nge bhyam bhyas nasi 5/1 bhyam bhyas nas 6/1 os am nyo sup so 5/1 and 6/1 are nasingas nasingasoho means immediately before nasingas ch means and words continued are engaha and ati engaha is 5/1 of eng a o which means then immediately after eng that is immediately after a and o ati is 7/1 of at that is short a so ati means immediately before short a purvaha that is previous sound as substitute and ekap purva parayoho one substitute in place of two namely the earlier and the latter substituents 
The meaning of the sutra after having put all these things together is the following. Immediately before Nasingas, that is suffixes of 5 slash 1 and 6 slash 1, and immediately after Aing, that is A or O, in place of both is placed one substitute which is the previous sound, Purva Rupa, that is Aing, that is A or O. I repeat, immediately before Nasingas, Nasingasoho, which are suffixes of 5 slash 1 and 6 slash 1, and immediately after Aing, Aingaha, in place of both, Purva Parayoho, is placed one substitute, Ekaha, which is Purvaha, or Purva Rupa, which in this case is Aing. Once again, this rule, as we observe, applies in a very, very restricted domain of, let us say, cases 5 slash 1 and 6 slash 1, a very, very restricted domain. So, in this case, it also cancels HO Yavayavaha, which would have otherwise applied. Here are the two examples. The first one is the 5 slash 1 of Hari, and the second one is the 6 slash 1 of Bhanu. So, Hari plus Nasi, Nasi is added by 412, then we have Hari plus Us. So, the markers are removed, ng by lashakva taddhite, e by upadeshe ajanunasikait 138 and 132 and then they are deleted by tasya lopaha 139. So, we have hari plus us. Now, in this case, eko yanachi has the scope of application but that is cancelled by 73111 which substitutes guna in place of this e ghair ngiti. So, we have hare plus as and now at this stage nasinga soscha comes into play and says that in place of this a and this a do not do h o y y v a h a but substitute one a in place of both of them. So, we have Hare plus us as the input, 61110 applies and the output is Har A S, that is Hares and Hare He, which means from Hari. Similar will be the derivation of 6 slash 1 as well. Now, let us go to the 6 slash 1 of Bhanu. Here we have Bhanu plus Ngas and here we have 412 applying, then the it Saudnya and Lopa happens. So, we have Bhanu plus As. Now, once again Gher Ngiti applies 73111 and this U is substituted by O. So, we have Bhano plus As. Now, at this stage, HO Yavayavaha has the scope of application, but that is cancelled and 61110 applies and substitutes both these O and A by one substitute that is Purva that is in this case O. So, we have Bhan, O, S, Bhanos and Bhano Ho. Similarly, the 5 slash 1 of Bhanu can also be derived. To summarize, we studied the Purva Rupa Sandhi along with the study of the four sutras. This Sandhi applies as we have seen in a very restricted domain and so it cancels the by default rules like 6178 etc. We also noted that 61107, 108 and 110, Ami Purvaha, Samprasaranacha, and nothing associate apply only within a pada, whereas 61109 applies only in between two padas. This distinction is very, very important. So now 
we come to the close of the treatment of Atsandi. The fifth instance, namely Purvarupa Sandhi, is also dealt with now. So, we will take a look at the study of Atsandhi that we carried out in this particular course. This we shall do in the next lecture. Thank you for your patience.